Uh, we're going to go to our next uh, speaker now, uh, Professor uh, Abdelhamid uh, Siam. He's a UN expert uh, from Rutgers University in uh, the US, a former UN spokesman who served on six UN peacekeeping missions, including in Iraq and the Western Sahara. He's a columnist for the Pan-Arab newspaper Al-Quds Al-Arabi and the author of four books, uh, essentially on how the UN has failed in uh, the countries of Syria, Libya, Yemen, and the Western Sahara. Uh, Professor Siam will speak about implementing existing international law for Palestine. Welcome, Professor C uh, Siam. Thank you very good. Thank you so much, Susan. Thank you. Uh, thank uh, everyone for attending this important panel. I mean, uh, what uh, Hania said and Shahid and Ala really left no words. Uh, more can be can be more effective than their testimonies. I have been associated all my life with the United Nations. I worked as a staff, and I left the United Nations after uh, UN headquarters in Baghdad was attacked, and I miraculously survived the uh, bombing. And then I chose to leave the UN and go to teach at Rutgers University, but I also went back to the UN as a journalist for Al-Quds Al-Arabi. I have not seen in all my life the hypocrisy and double standard and double talk the way I saw it in the last year. I saw countries who, uh, speaking uh, against international law. I saw them speaking lies and accusing Palestinians of something they had never done. They had circulated the Israeli lies and some of them even tried to shy away and not say anything, especially those who are supposed to say something. For example, there is a convention on the prevention and uh, punishment of genocide. The woman who is in charge of this convention did not say much. She spoke at length of what happened on October 7 in Israel. She almost, she rushed to visit Israel, but she did not say something about the Palestinian. Same thing with Karim Khan. He went uh, twice to Rafah and he visited Israel for three days. And he spoke at a very lengthy statement of what happened in Israel, but he failed to say many things about what happening to the Palestinians. The only thing he did, he asked the, uh, the, the court to issue arrest uh, warrants against Netanyahu and Gallant, which he knew that it will not happen. He knew that. I recently wrote an article, it's called The Unveiler, uh, about Gaza, Gaza the Unveiler, because it has unveiled the impotence of the Palestinian Authority. It has unveiled the uh, impotence uh, of the Arab world in general, that they prove to have no weight and no influence and no role completely. And it has also unveiled the real intentions of Israel because there is no now, there is no makeup. It is clearly that Israel wants to destroy the existence of the Palestinian people. There is no other uh, goal that Israel is committed to it more than this. And they voted in the Knesset, as you know, in 2018, this is a Jewish state and the identity is Jewish and uh, self-determination applies only to Jews between the river and the sea. And Netanyahu did not lie when he put the uh, map of Israel in front of the UN twice in 2023. Uh, 20, and just last September, he put it again, the same map which abolishes the uh, Palestine. So this is had to be uh, to keep that in mind. Talking about international law is very complex and it takes time and I don't have enough time to talk about it, but let me just say a few things. Israel 
there is no other country in the world that had violated international law more than Israel. Nothing. And that's the only country that had never been punished, never been uh, called for account, never been questioned, never felt that it has to answer to anyone like Israel. For example, when North Korea violates the NPT, then there is a set of punishment. There is uh, it's nine resolutions against North Korea, and the uh, the basket of uh, of embargo and punishment and uh, 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 that that Korea now uh, cannot even trade or can buy or can uh, import oil or because of these set of uh, resolution. Same thing with Iran. Same thing with many countries. For example, when Iraq invaded Kuwait, within a few hours, resolution six six zero was passed. A few hours not only one day, immediately everything was uh, adopted under chapter seven, but not the case with Israel. Israel from day one, it's in violation of UN resolution. And I want to talk about sets of uh, um, areas where Israel in violation, Security Council resolutions, General Assembly resolutions, conventions, accords, and agreements, ICJ, legal opinion, and human rights investigation teams, and ICC, and I could go on, uh, uh, on and on, but let me just be uh, brief. With Security Council resolution, there are so many, and I cannot count them because they, they address every aspect of the Arab-Israeli conflict. But let me mention a few. For example, 242 of 1967, it called on Israel, to withdraw from the land it occupied. In the preamble, it says no acquisition of land by force. Very clear. This is a, a very important pillar of international law, not to, uh, not to acquire land by force. Very simple. Israel ignored 242, and it was re-emphasized again in 1973 with Resolution 338, yet it were both ignored. There are resolutions that address settlement. There are resolutions that addresses Jerusalem. At least eight resolution has to do with Jerusalem. The last two important resolution on Jerusalem, resolution 476 and 478 of 1980, when Israel passed that basic law declaring Jerusalem as the eternal united capital of the state of Israel in violation of international law. So Security Council passed two resolutions, 476 and 478, yet Israel ignored that. There are many other resolutions that the resolutions deal with, for example, the excessive use of force. There is a resolution 904 after the massacre in Hebron in, in, 20, in 2004, when an Israeli, uh, sorry, let me take the date back, 1994, when an Israeli extremist entered the uh, 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 Al Khalil Mosque, Al Khalili, or Al Ibrahimi Mosque, and massacred 29 and wounded 150. 904 called for the protection of Palestinians. Of course, it was not, uh, uh, it was not respected. Uh, last important resolution, 2334, uh, in 2016, the last few days of Obama administration. And in fact, Obama allowed that resolution to pass. They didn't veto it, which talks about certain very important resolution. Yet it was ignored as well. So we can talk a lot about violation of Security Council resolutions. The other day, uh, the American ambassador, Linda Thomas Greenfield, after uh, adopting resolution 20, uh, 2728 about uh, a ceasefire in Gaza, she stood in front of the journalists and boldly said, this resolution is not binding. But either she was completely ignorant or she meant that we will not pay any attention to it, which they did. But every Security Council resolution is binding. There is two levels of, uh, of resolution, binding and enforceable. Binding, every resolution is binding. Enforceable if it's under Chapter 7. So 
every resolution is binding according to Article 25 of the UN Charter. Every member state, which becomes a member state and accept the UN Charter, it is obliged to be bound by UN Security Council resolution. Again, with the G8, Israel in violation of all the GA resolution re regarding Palestine. It, the GA passed over 25 resolutions confirming the right of Palestinians to return to their homes. But let me talk about two resolutions, 181 and 194 of 19. 181 is the partition resolution, which talks about creating two states, one state for Israel, one state for Palestinians. One was implemented and one wasn't. And then 194 is the right of return. Now, on May, May 11, 1949, when the, when the GA voted to accept Israel as a state, there was a vote. But Israel was asked to put in writing, in writing, that they accept the obligations emanating from resolution 181 and 194. They put it in writing. So it's the only country in the world that has been admitted with a condition. And the condition is written by Israel and signed by Israel. Yet, of course, once they've been admitted, they ignore all that. And another resolution I want to remind you of, Resolution 3236 of 1974, and a very important resolution. It spells out what are the Palestinian rights. And it talks about the right of Palestinians to return to their homes the right of statehood, the right of self-determination, and the right to resist occupation. And that is important. The Palestinian resisting occupation is legal by international law, and it has been approved by the UN General Assembly, exactly the way it was approved with South Africa and Namibia and other countries who fell under occupation. So. All these resolutions uh, passed by the GA were ignored by Israel. I want to talk about also the conventions. Israel in violation of all the UN conventions. I want to mention just one important, because you know all, and I can talk about convention on genocide, the convention on racism, the convention on uh, discrimination against women, the right of the child, all of these Israeli violations. But let me talk about one important, which is the Fourth Geneva Convention, because that is so much related to Palestine. The Fourth Geneva Convention, there are four conventions, one, two, three, and four. Three talks about a prisoner of war, and four talks about civilian. So the Fourth Geneva Convention, which was approved in 20 August 1949, it talks about Three things, the occupying power and what's its obligation, the occupying people, the occupied people and what are their rights, and the occupied land and how it should be treated. Israel in violation of all three. So, for example, Israel is, in, uh, is responsible for the people under occupation, their welfare, their health, their food, their street, their garbage, they're everything. The second, they are obliged to respect the land and not change anything they occupy. They're not supposed to move their population to the occupied land, according to Article 49. So all the settlers are elite. There is no doubt about it. There is no interpretation. There is no if and but. There is they're not supposed to move population from their homes or lands to anywhere. They're not supposed to destroy any cultural monument or heritage or, for example, mosques, churches, um, uh, old buildings, anything. It's, it's spelled out in the Four Geneva Convention. They have no right to arrest with no proper uh, procedure. They cannot. Israel arrests children now under the age of uh, sometimes as, as, as young as nine years old, at uh, 12, and they put them in, in, under trial, by the way. And in a military court, which is it's the only country in the world that have military court for children. 
they have no right to destroy property, which they've been destroying every single day almost. They have no right to prevent food, water, and fuel, which as you can see in Gaza. Now, so it's spilled out in the four Geneva Convention. I strongly recommend that everyone in this uh, symposium to go and read the four Geneva Convention and compare to see what Israel is doing now. I will, uh, yeah, it's too much to talk about. I don't want to take much of your time, but the four Geneva Convention is important to read. And also the convention uh, to, pre to prevent and punish the crime of genocide, which is Alice Inderitu from Kenya, who's in charge of this important convention, did not say much about what's going on in Palestine. She's hiding her, her head in the sand as if nothing happened. This is unbelievable. I could so also talk about Virginia Gamba, who is in charge of children in armed conflict. Or I'll talk about uh, Pramila Patel, who, who is in charge of uh, sexual violation against women in the, in the, in the conflict area, which they, she talked about. Mostly these Israeli women, which they say they, you know, they were raped, but not what happened to the Palestinians. I want to talk about also Human Rights Council. The Human Rights Council had established many investigation teams, and they came up, which they, they, they addressed some massacre, and they come with some report. So in 2002, there was a, a team to investigate what happened in Jenin refugee camp. It was dissolved. No, they did not, they did not cooperate. They did not open the doors to accept the team. In 2006, Desmond Tutu from South Africa, he went to investigate what happened in Beit Hanun in Gaza. He put an excellent report. And the Israeli ambassador, he said, we will put it on the shelf with other resolution and, and uh, reports. In 2008, 2009, uh, Judge Go uh, Goldstone of South Africa put 500 page uh, investigation results of what happened in that war. And Goldstone report was also put in the shell. In 2014, the 50 day war, Shabazz, William Shabazz of Canada, he put a report also and about the atrocities committed in that war, yet it was not respected. Recently, Navi P Pillai of South Africa also, she is the head of the independent team to investigate violation of human rights in the occupied Palestinian territories, including Jerusalem and Israel, which was established in 2021. She put three reports about what happened in Gaza, yet nothing. It's not, it's, it doesn't concern Israel. I just want to put a footnote. Israel has been attacking the UN. The ambassador of Israel in the Security Council, he said, I want to see this building Demolished. He accused the Secretary General of being uh, anti semitic He accused 143 countries voted to qualify Palestine as a full independent state. He called them that you are supporting terrorism. That 143 countries. So that is uh, just to give you an example. And instead, the UN, which established the state of Israel, now they are, are under attack. And as you know, they are trying now to completely destroy UNRWA, the UN uh, work uh, and, uh, and uh, the, the agency to, to help Palestinian refugees, UNRWA. Also, I want to talk about ICJ. ICJ, most important legal opinion was issued on 9 July 2004. After debating the issue of the separation wall, which was established on Palestinian land, by a recommendation of the General Assembly. General Assembly asked ICJ, give us your legal opinion. So the opinion came out in, uh, on July 9, 2004, which says the wall is illegal, it should be dismantled, and Palestinians should be compensated. And it's not only this, but that legal opinion is very, very extensive. It talks about the Palestinian as a people. It talks about Palestinian as under occupation. It talks about the illegality of the occupation. It talks about that it's not what Israel claimed that they occupied this land from no one. 
that they say. But they said, no, it was occupied during under the Jordanian, and this is, uh, it, it applies, the, the international law applies, and Israel okay. is in violation. I know I'm, I'm taking to, I, I will conclude if you give me one more minute. And I will just say, uh, fast, there are three, uh, of course, as you know, provisional uh, measures the uh, ICJ has issued recently about the war in Gaza. But the most important one, underline what the ICJ issued on 19 July about occupation itself and about settlement. And it should be dismantled. And the occupation is illegal and should be concluded. And asking you and, and all international organ and member states to implement this illegal opinion. Finally, the people some think that the ICC, the International Criminal Court, would give justice to the Palestinian. I truly, truly doubt that. From my following what Karim Khan did through uh, the last three years, I really doubt that anything will come out of the ICC. With that, I have so many, I hope I have time to answer your questions. Thank you very much for listening to me.